This is Twit. Third-party authenticators. In the aftermath of the Apple's, Google's, and Microsoft's announcements of their forthcoming support for FIDO2 and passkeys authentication, we've been talking about what all this means. And I believe that we've settled into exactly the right understanding. It's relatively quick and easy for those three major publishers to add this support to their clients as they've all announced they're going to. And when they've done so, everyone will be just one software update away from having that client-side technology in their hands. But it's a bit like creating the first shortwave radio. You know, there's no one else to talk to yet. So the existence of all those clients won't be very useful initially. The heavy lift will be getting the millions of individual web servers updated to support the web auth n standard at their end, since any use of Apple's, Google's, and Microsoft's clients will require that too. And I believe that we've also identified that the biggest usability hurdle for the practical use of FIDO2's private passkeys is the need for their dynamic synchronization. And now that the world, it's been interesting to watch, now that the world has sobered up after the intoxicating passkeys announcement parties, others are realizing what we immediately saw as a problem. A story in Fast Company is titled, There's a Big Problem with Apple and Google's Plans to Nix Passwords. And 9 to 5 Max headline read, a world without passwords could further lock users into Apple and Google ecosystems. Yeah, like we've been saying. Those stories note that, quote, Fido's current proposal has no mechanism for bulk transferring pass keys between ecosystems. If you want to switch from an Android phone to an iPhone or vice versa, you won't be able to easily move all your pass keys over. And they didn't mention Windows, but we know the same problem will exist there. Quote, we don't really have a batch export method right now, says Fido Alliance Executive Director Andrew uh, Shikiar. He said, I think that's probably a future iteration unquote. Wow. <laughs> so those Fido guys were really not thinking through the usability angle of all this. You know, saying, we'd like you all to adopt this half-baked solution today, and we'll worry about exporting your locked-in keys later. Uh, the, re the reports that have been published also explain the fear is that if users can easily move all their pass keys between providers, hackers may try to exploit this capability. For now, it's unclear when or how Fido might address that problem. And then they quote the president, the president of the Fido Alliance, uh, Sam uh, uh, Srinivas, Google's product management director for secure authentication, who's also the president of the FIDO Alliance, says, quote, it's very hard to do it safely from the get-go because if we give a mechanism without great care for someone to export all these keys, you know who's going to show up first for that. That's a good point. That's actually a really good point I hadn't thought about. He says... Because it would not, have to export that in clear, right? In the clear, right? It's It's got to do it... Well, no. I mean... No. Because you your assign, input's going to be a secondary FIDO2 server, so... Right. I mean, it's, it's clear there are ways this could be done. They... But again, because... This it was like the FIDO concept was never meant to scale this way. They, they, it was scaled by force because it didn't go as FIDO 1. It just didn't, it never got off the ground. So 
they did one without really thinking it through. Anyway, so in other words, we're going to be quite happy, uh, they're saying, with lock-in. And we're going to tell users that it's too dangerous to allow them to move their keys around themselves. That's a huge now, problem. And of course it is. You know, and as a cross-vendor user myself, I need Apple and Windows to sync. And I don't see that happening without either a third-party synchronization vendor, which is a thing that could exist, or third-party FIDO2 passkeys being supported by a password manager. Which brings us to two password managers which I've been looking into and want to briefly discuss. LastPass and Bitwarden. As everyone knows, LastPass was previously a many years sponsor of this podcast and of the Twit Network, and Bitwarden is currently a sponsor and offers a compelling array of solutions. So the question I had was where do those two fit within this new and evolving era? As I believe I mentioned last week, I was annoyed with LastPass because their most recent blog posting from Monday before last, which I was hoping would provide some clarification, left me feeling more confused than I was before. Everything they say feels sort of coy and blurry. You know, nothing they say just tells us what is going on. Uh, here's an example, direct quote from an announcement of an upcoming webinar that they'll be hosting two days from now, this coming Thursday. They wrote, it's time to envision a world without passwords, a world that removes the password related friction that prevents users from securing and managing their passwords easily and automatically. True FIDO2 compliant passwordless access to every device, browser, website, and app will take years to develop. Okay, right? But LastPass can get you there sooner. What? Huh? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, okay, how? Join us. To learn how LastPass is enabling an end-to-end -end passwordless experience for the LastPass vault and all sites stored within. Okay, what will this enable you to do? Reduce password-related friction for employees, increase usage and adoption, set stronger policies and increase security, fewer lockouts for employees and resets for IT. Here... From LastPass CTO Christopher Hoff, as he demonstrates a passwordless login experience and discusses future plans for FIDO2 authenticators like biometrics and security keys. Okay, well, first of all, FIDO2 authenticators. That's okay. not pass I mean, keys, right? It's, it's like, it's, it's just, it's all a big blur. So, as I said, you know, it, this is like their recent blog posting, which doesn't actually say anything. And, the, and, and you, could, you could, I guess you could sort of forgive them here because they're teasing their webinar in two days. But the blog posting was the same. It just left, it was like, it, you, it, you made up new terms and used them in weird ways. Like, uh, what does a, an authenticator have to do with biometrics? That those are two different things, but they use them together. So anyway, for what it's worth, I did want to let our listeners know that there will be a webinar in two days. Uh, I, I've got the link to it in the show notes. I made it this week's shortcut. So grc.sc slash 876 will bounce you over to a sign-up page. I'll be watching to see what we learn from Christopher. You know, we know Christopher. You and I have met him, Leo. We were on stage together a couple of years ago, just before COVID. Uh, oh, yeah. No, <laughs> that's not the guy we were on with. Oh, it isn't? No. Oh, okay. I think this is a new guy. You know, oh, they've okay. gone through uh, some ownership changes. <laughs> well, yeah, they're owned now by a no. an equity. Uh, no, they were. They? Oh. And now they're oh. spun off. <laughs> from from the private equity yeah. firm? That didn't that didn't take long. No. So it's it's unclear. <laughs> uh it's really unclear what's going on with uh with them. And uh, yeah, the people well, that anyway. we know are gone. 
pretty much. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Well, we know that Joe is long since gone. Yeah. So yeah. Joe Segrist, the creator, yeah. is gone. His uh, his nephew, his niece was there. I think she's gone. And then we knew we were uh, with the CISO, I think, or the CTO uh, on that panel. But I think he left In as Boston. well. Yeah, yeah, I think he left as well. So it's kind. So, I don't know who these people are. But we should watch. So I did. Yeah. I, I did. I, I I wanted to watch because I know that just for inertia's sake, a lot of our listeners are still there. The good news is, Bitwarden is a member of the Fido Alliance. Well, that's a good sign. Yes, it is. Yeah. So of course, Bitwarden Bit, Bitwarden is a, our current password manager sponsor. So I, I think the problem that any third-party logon system reasonably has had is the chicken and egg problem, which makes it difficult for them to invest in any system which cannot actually be used until it's supported by the world's servers. So the flip side of that is that the clear and obvious need for cross-vendor passkey synchronization, which is more and more clear every week, you know, uh, you know, it, it's now very clear. Fido and Google both just throw up their hands and, you know, saying, yeah, that's a problem. Um, and that creates the biggest need and push for third party pass key managers that there's ever been. So I wanted to understand where Bitwarden stood. I did some digging around and found some dialogue in their community forum under the title Bitwarden Passkey, parens, how does Bitwarden fit into the new Microsoft, Google, Apple Passkey initiative? So the person posting this wrote the question, Microsoft, Google, and Apple have announced support for the FIDO2 passwordless initiative that media are calling passkeys. Because passkeys creates a new key pair for each website login, there is the issue of moving all these key pairs among devices. He says, I'm sure that Google will do that for Android and Chrome, and Apple will do it for their iPhones and Macs. But what about between Android and Apple or Linux? And, you know, not to mention Windows. Would, he asks, Bitwarden be able to support the new passkeys cross-platform like it does with current passwords. He says, I want to sync Android to Linux desktop, and I will wait for Bitwarden to support this if the feature will be added. So, and that's how I think a lot of us feel. You know, you do, you do not want to get stuck could, with, with non-exportable passkeys. Could a third party like Bitwarden do Pass keys and become, you know, like, I mean, it's still not exportable. So if you decided you didn't like Bitwarden, you'd be stuck there. But at least it would let you use an Android phone or an iPhone or Windows or Mac. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that would yeah. be a big advantage. So could they could they do this? They'd keep the database. They'd have to have some sort of biometric, ideally some sort of biometric login, right? Or you could use a YubiKey. I mean, I can use a YubiKey. I do, in fact, use a YubiKey with my well, uh, Bitwarden. Um, it, as we know, it's now possible for any apps on those platforms, like Android and iOS, to leverage the built-in biometrics on the device. True. So, th in fact, they do that. When I open Bitwarden on those yep. devices, it does a face recognition, and we're in. Uh, yep. On my... On my Computers, when I set up a new account, I have to use the YubiKey the first time on a new system. Right. Um, and so so for security, they may want to enforce the use of some affirmative device right. in order pr to, to protect. Right. But, there is, but they could synchronize pass keys in the cloud exactly as they synchronize right. usernames and passwords right now. And so I, I think that's going to be the solution. I don't think Apple is going to address this. I don't think Google are going to address it. They're both saying, I mean, it turns out the president of Fido is the Google guy. And he's saying, oh, <laughs> I know. I thought, and I guess I was wrong. I, I was told that Apple had said there is a way to get these out. But and maybe. Key at a time. Oh, and, one and key that, at a time. Uh, well, that's, yes, yeah, in that's order to ideal. share a pass key, and and so so the problem is when you when you authenticate to a new site, 
you want all of your ecosystem to be, be right. brought up to speed so that you can then go somewhere else, like to a, to a different computer, and log into that site. You don't want to have to manually <clears throat> send that passkey to each, you know, like cross ecosystem into the other world or you, you you're those two are never going to be sync be, be synchronized it need and that's why i've been using the term dynamic passkey synchronization it needs to be done for you on the fly and that is exactly what what bitwarden supporting this you know passkeys fido2 style passkeys would mean anyway the I, answer i think maybe and this is a complete conspiracy theory. This will <laughs> open the idea to, you know, maybe there's a better way. And, you know, maybe somebody's going to come across Squirrel and say, actually, there is a better way. And let's just do this. Because it is better in every respect. Yes, it would be good. It would be good if that happened. So the answer in the forum is Bitwarden does currently support... FIDO2 web auth n for multi-factor authentication in addition to your master password for vault unlocking. In other words, when you use and, and this has been in there for a while and and again, they are already a member of the FIDO alliance. So they're they're actually being a web auth n server to accept a FIDO2 client's authentication as a very strong factor when you, you log in to unlock your Bitwarden vault. And this guy says, Bitwarden, and there's, I have a, a picture in the show notes, but there is a, a Bitwarden uh, blob, says two-step login via FIDO2 web authn, Bitwarden help and support. So that's been in Bitwarden for some time. So this guy finishes, Bitwarden does not support using these pass keys to log in in lieu of the password manager yet, but there is a current similar feature request for this to be supported. And you got to know that the wizards at Bitwarden are, you know, understand they've got an opportunity here to, to get going on this. This is one advantage you have as an open source project somebody could issue a pull request and implement it i mean you know if, if the yep. if the community wants yep. to support it they can they can add it i mean you know, it sounds like in addition to your master password for vault unlocking that's just for basically that's one password it supports web often for one password your master password I exactly yeah exactly yeah. which is nice yes. in fact you could yes use a well, fido2 it, there are fido2 yubikeys that you could use for that right, purpose yeah. right and and it does and so what this does mean is that the bit somewhere in bitwarden there are already people who are fully fido aware and what we need is for them to reverse roles right now they're being a web authn uh, uh, provider for a FIDO2 authenticator. We need them to become a FIDO2 authenticator talking to web auth -N providers at websites. And that would be that awesome. doesn't, yeah. And that doesn't seem like that big a reach to me. So anyway, we, th their, their, their roadmap page has a great deal of discussion of this. So I'm sure it's something that they're aware of now. And again, you really can't fault any password manager for not doing it preemptively. I mean, I did, but I just did it as a proof of concept to demonstrate this is the way we can solve this problem. And I knew that only, you know, two sites or three or four uh, in the world we're going to be able to use Squirrel. But my hope was that by showing how it could be done, you know, that would get the world going. So, and it may be that showing that there's a better solution, as you said, Leo, may may still get the world to, think, to say, hey, you know, uh, why don't we just do this? And, and it's not that big a reach because the, the web authn protocol optionally supports the crypto that is key to Squirrel's operation. That is, that allows it to use deterministic keys rather than keys that are completely random. So anyway, we'll see.